Hi, my name's Dave Milton and today we'll be looking how to service the MD95 valve. Today we'll cover the MD95 uh, valve service. Uh, we'll see the parts that you need, the tools that are required and how to do it and especially how to set the small washers up inside the valve. The parts you're going to require for doing the MD95 are laid out on the table there. So you're going to need a pair of gloves for the internal. Uh, you're going to need a kit which is the MD5 SK. There's only one kit for this but I'll show you what's in there in a moment. Uh, vernier is quite handy just for checking the size of the small washers. The T-bar which you operate the valve with and an Allen key which should be in the kit. It's an M3 Allen key. Lint free cloth some isopropanol and the valve of course. Inside the service kit you have the nickel diaphragm which is the seal and also the body seal as well. We have two different size snore washers uh, this becomes important later on the A version is the 0.7 and the B version 0.8 millimeters thick the screws we do supply, uh, these are, are domed ended screws, but you'll probably find that it's quite difficult to get these screws out fully and you don't need to remove them. So unless the screws have got damaged, I would not change this part. Uh, you also notice a question we get a lot is that you see that the screws are proud of the body. Uh, this is actually correct, there's not a problem there, it's just the way the seal works inside uh, which I'll show you once I take the valve apart. If you're new to these valves, I'll just explain a little bit about these valves and how they work. Um, some people may think there's not very much movement on these, which there isn't. So if you, if you think you're suffering from the amount of travel that the valve is doing, then it may be okay. So just to explain how far that is, you can see here where we've got the two lines which are in line, which shows the valve is actually closed. Uh, to open the valve, you just simply turn the handle, and you're probably only going to get between half and three quarters of a turn before the valve is fully open to atmosphere. So just be aware of that. Also, when you strip these valves down, which we're about to show you how to do this, just make sure the valve is wound open as so there's no force on the plunger in the middle while you're doing this. The first part I'll do with bare hands, although some people will want to use gloves even at this stage. Uh, if you do use gloves at this stage, be very careful of cross-contamination. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is just loosen the screws around the body and usually half a turn is more than enough to release the body. Once the screws are released, the body will undo. And now we can see the inside movement, which I will now explain. When you look inside here, you can see the screws are just protruding. And they push down on this ring here. So I remove this ring, and you can see there's a cap that comes off of this, which is on the top of this plunger assembly. And in here, is a set of snore washers, which again is important how these snore washers go in. Uh, this item here, which is pushed down by these screws, then in turn pushed down on the disc, and you can see here the indentation, and there's a knife edge on the inside. So what's happening is this is pushing down on the disc, which is cutting into the knife edge, which creates the seal. Just to explain a bit more about the snore washers or Bellevue washers. Uh, this is a washer that is cup shaped. And you can see here, if you look closely, this is cup up, this is cup down, and this is cup up. 
this is very important how these go back in. Uh, these are the old ones, but just to show you, the first one is cut up, the next one is cut down, and the last one is cut up, and then you put the cap onto it. That is how this is assembled. Now we look at the lower section, uh, which has got the disc in. Uh, this is sometimes stuck in and it's, it's just trapped itself. Uh, what you need to do then is just push a small allen key in this hole and just push it up until this comes out. In this case on this one it's loose and again you can see there's some snore washers inside. This is the actual sealing area, it's this part here and this is the knife edge around the side. And if you look on here, you can see where it's formed the seal for the body to atmosphere and where the seal is for the knife edge that creates the leak valve movement. Again, we have the snore washers here, and this is how the snore washers have come out. So the first one that sat in there was down, cup down. Next one is cup up and then the last one is cut down again. It's very important, the orientation that these go in. There is one other important thing with these snore washers, and that's the ones that are inside by the knife edge are the 0.7 millimeters thick, and the ones on the top side of the sealing disc are the 0.8 millimeters thick. This is where it's handy to have a vernier to check these. Before you reassemble the valve uh, we just need to make sure that it's cleaned out so the best thing to do is get some lymphary cloth and some alcohol and we just wipe around. Uh, be very careful with the cloth, make sure the cloth is clean because you do not want to damage this inner surface here uh, which is the, um, the surface where the leak is created. So we just wipe around the inside of the valve and then I would also just do the snore washers. I mean these should be clean but it's uh, worth just um, double checking. Uh, these have been checked. Uh, these are the point eights which for the outside and these are the point sevens, which are for the inside. So we now we'll do the assembly, and we have the point sevens first. And as I mentioned, the orientation of these, I'll go through this again. So this, the first one, is dish down, dish up, and dish down and then you can put in the disc itself. Just check the disc, see which is the best side, make sure there's no, no marks that's uh, appeared on there. So use the best side, uh, which will be the side that's down. Uh, then we need to assemble the, the middle section, shall we call this, and this needs the point eights. So the first one is dish up, next one is dish down, and the last one is dish up, and then we can put the top on. Next thing we do is we place the, the ring that will create the, the seal onto here. It's probably easier if you put this on first, align it and then drop the top section on. Once that's on you can screw this down. Now just before you do, just wind them back a little bit more just to make sure that they will be clear of the inner assembly. Once that's done, carefully lift the valve up and just screw the two parts together. And the faces of these should be face to face. As such. Now to seal the valve off 
uh, again, be very careful with this because you don't want to overdo one side. So just do the screws up until you can feel them touch down on the ring below. Once that's done, just even them off, going across, and then tighten. And you need no more than just so you can feel the tension. So you can see how much I've done on these. and that should be enough to seal the valve off. The next thing to do, once you believe you've got this leak tight, you're going to need to leak check it. So you're going to need to blank this port off, leave the valve open and pump it down on the leak checker, put some helium around it to see if it leaks. If there is a small leak, and it will only be a small leak, just tighten these screws down just a little bit, just a few degrees at a time. Uh, once you've done that, you can vent it remove the blank of the side port and then you can tighten it down. Now this is quite an important part when you do actually tighten it down because what you don't want to do is go past the, the usability of the disc inside. So when you're tightening it up just make sure you get to that very first part where it feels tight. Then pump it down again, put some helium in the air, if it leaks then just a little bit more on air, just a few degrees at a time until the leak stops. Once the leak has stopped, you need just to check the valve uh, has got its movement. So the next thing you would do is vent the leak checker again, open and close the valve a few times back to the index mark. And how you set the index mark is once you believe you're there, you'll need another Allen key which releases this grub screw on the side just align the two, the two um, index lines on the body and top cap and then each time you open the valve make sure you go back to the same place where you believe the valve was leak tight and then pump it down again and put some more helium into the side port to see if it leaks. If it does leak, tighten down a bit more and reset the index. Keep doing that until the valve is leak tight. I hope you found that's interesting on how to do the MD95. It's a question we get a lot, so by this video you can actually see what you actually do. If you found this video interesting, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.